Mm-hmm. You are fit for me. Okay, okay. yeah. So, I'm buying. What makes, how does it affect your life? Because you can say, so you have moved to Berlin to start the process again as it should have been. I think it's important to portray somehow that it is different, and this is a whole goal. Uh, being Ukrainian, yeah. okay, uh, or having lived here for a long time, yeah. and then come to Germany. But in this case, they're students. I, for example, before knowing about this, I didn't even think of students or people who were in Ukraine thinking it was a safe spot for a couple of years, and then they have to come and do the journey until Germany. Like, that is not your life vision yeah. at all. As a student arriving to Ukraine, you know, for a couple of years, what was your... Uh, yeah, yeah, what was your... Um, how did it break with your life vision that you had to leave so soon, you know? Like, what was your mentality when you thought you were in a safe space, fine, or, you know, to achieve your dreams. I guess you were in university and you wanted to be a medical student. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, this happens. What was your first thought? Exactly. And then the rules are changed on you. Around 1 million refugees from Ukraine were registered in the Central Register of Foreigners, according to the Federal Ministry of the Interior. Important to highlight once again that women represent the vast majority of those leaving the country. 55,000 people did not have a residence permit. Here at IVS Radio, we expose the extensive and ignored difficulties that this means for BIPOC migrants. Here in the studio today, we have Beatrice Msokwa. She was an aerospace student residing in Kharkiv. In the middle, I have Janet Sylvester, a fourth year student studying pharmacy, also residing in Kharkiv. And on my left, I have Asiye Abubakar, Asiye Abubakar, fifth year student residing in Kiev. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The first actually bombing and the shelling of Kiev happened on Earth. But then by the, before we got to the border, they had instituted this um, policy that anyone, regardless of the passport that they hold, can cross, theoretically. It wasn't in practice. We know that now. Interesting. Janet, how was it for you? Uh, for me, first of all, it was shocking because it's my first time to experience this kind of thing. So when this was started, um, no one knew exactly what to do. Everyone was running. For example, I was living in a hostel. Every Ukrainian person was running to their families. But this us black people, we had to remain at the hostel. And our school was sending us information to go maybe at the metro because it was safe or we stay underground so what do you mean by underground underground is like shelter okay. yeah in case if they bomb maybe it would be difficult for this bomb to reach us so we had to stay there underground there was no food no water no electricity and we are both scared because at first there was misinformation. They told black people that this is the train that is leaving Kharkiv. But when this train came, it seems like the white people had information before us. So everyone was boarding, but the right train that was leaving came after we boarded inside. So if you say you want to go to another train, you have, you have to walk around to yeah. reach this train. And by the time you reach this train, it will be already leaving. Yeah. Because a lot of people wanted to leave the country. So um, you, I had to use common sense and go underground so that I can reach fast this train. And even, if, and, and even by the time I reached, people are crowded. I was in the back. So... I, I saw some black men, they were stepping on other people's head to reach inside. So I had to follow the same, same process yeah. to reach inside. Yeah. yeah, from there I left. Then I went to Lviv 
but it took time because it's like um the train was going then it stops going then stops it was i was scared like I, I, my head was like maybe when we reach somewhere the bomb will reach us you understand yeah then when we reach to um Lviv uh, there were three borders which people could go outside Poland border Slovakia and um which one was another border Hungary Hungary, Hungary. So lucky for me I had other friends of mine who went through Slovakian border because we had in Hungary border people were starving outside and it was very cold some of them they died by that time I had seven people died because if you are black you are not supposed to like they were not allowing you to enter inside only um Ukrainian people are allowed to go inside and in Hungary border by that time I had men were not allowed to go inside so so far I had to use the Slovakia border and even at that Slovakia border eh, we, when we reached there black people people who didn't have um Ukrainian passport we were told to stand aside and let Ukrainian pass we stayed there and it was cold and remember we didn't eat anything since morning and everything and it was very cold so we had to wait until they allowed us to move inside yeah yeah thank you that kind of brings us to the second question where you already stated where the discrimination started yeah where did the discrimination start for you Beatrice okay um like for me i entered the train and i stood for the whole day because like as i said that the white people had the information so a lot of the white had chairs and everything but as for me i had stand and yeah the whole the, the whole 24 hour journey i had stand and i sat where sitting it was very hard like it was once a person goes to the toilet that's when i have a time to sit yeah and at the border also like I walked through the border and at the border we were stopped we were told to wait the white people to pass then for us by by midnight that's when the black people were allowed to pass so that was where the discrimination started at the Poland border and what about you Asia I think it was there was no official channels of communication it was more about community organized so i would have a friend who went ahead of me and he would tell you then when you go you tell the friend behind you or that you go as a group because it felt like we were being deliberately kept out of the loop and let's say for example we get to the platform the train platform and people are lined up and trying to get on the train and when they realize that the train is coming the police try and start using lashes on people and saying move back move back and then there's this um panic and people run and this sort of almost a stampede and they kept doing that almost every time the train was coming and i realized what was going on and i told my friends look when they start whipping people nothing is happening i think they're just trying to create space for the white people to board the train so when they do that next time don't go just stay so there's also the extortion because they realize that you want to get out and they know that the trains are not letting you on so they charge you a certain amount of money because they know you're desperate if you're going to take maka i'm going to charge you let's say 250 or 500 per person because the train is not going to let you on what are you going to do so we get to Lviv and again same extortion we almost uh, we had the problems about the problems happening at the medica uh, crossing to poland so we had another crossing ravaruska and we went there and by the time we got there again it was also almost full and we'd walked for almost an entire day and you get there and you find that the border police are dividing people into ukrainians and foreigners this other side and then a car comes and they just let ukrainians in and the rest of you have been told to sit down sit down but you know logically nobody wants to sit down when there's a car so every time a train a car comes there's almost this stampede to try and get onto it and then this push back by the police putting guns in your face telling you to sit down back as the ukrainians have this sort of royal treatment to get into their cars so that kept on happening for hours and hours and hours without a single person of color being let on that that was a hard journey how was the process of entering europe maybe i start with you bit beatrice okay it was difficult yeah because like i walked 
through Poland. I used the whole day and once I reached Poland, I was stopped at the border. I was told to wait until midnight. That's when I was able to pass. And at the border, there are people who I came with, like we, we were walking together. I did not know them and they were stopped due to the fact that they did not have their document. They forgot their document. And once I entered Europe, like I did not, I did not know like what's next, like where am I going, like how am I going to register myself and everything. So I just got a host, and a host hosted me for like a week, and she told me like I can't continue hosting you. So I had to find another solution, like which other country can I go, like which other place can I get help. So I decided to board a train to to Germany. Yeah. So when the train reached there, like. I was praying because I had rumors that black people are getting off the train and they are going to check them. They are doing their registration and everything, which is literally, you know, it's not the registration. It's just like they're trying to, 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 to like, to make them like feel inferior. Like the, it was not the registration. Yeah. So by God's grace, I, I was able to pass the, the, the Frankfurt they did not see me, so I passed. I reached Berlin. Berlin, I was told that the city is full. But I just I just said, like, I'm going, I said I'm coming to Berlin. That's where, that's my destination. So I want to go to other place. So, yeah, then I, I went to this place called Tabman, and they helped me with accommodation. Though before I did not know Tabman the night, because I entered Germany in the midnight. So I did not know Tabman, I did not know anything. So I slept at the Uppbahnhof. Yeah. <laughs> 